a 52 year old patient with 30 pack years history of smoking presented with exertional dyspnea cough wheezing for 4 months a 52 year old patient with 30 pack years history of smoking presented with exertional dyspnea cough wheezing for 4 months okay so we have a relatively like okay past mid age presenting with 30 pack years history of uh, smoking with exertional dyspnea cough and wheezing for 4 months okay please pay attention when there is 30 pack years history there are two things that patient may be at increased risk of developing right so one is copd so copd risk increases once there is more than 15 pack years history more than 15 pack years history and the second thing this patient is at increased risk is carcinoma of the lung ca lung so the ca lung risk increases significantly after patient has accrued 30 pack years so this patient has accrued 30 pack years so he may be at risk of these two conditions okay and he is having exertional dyspnea cough and wheeze from past four months his chest x-ray was unremarkable pft showed post bronchodilator fev1 by fvc of 0.5 so we are dealing with a case of obstructive lung disease and after doing the bronchodilator reversibility test is FEV1 improved by 4% so are we dealing with asthma definitely not right it was not more than 12% so typically we are dealing with a case of COPD here it looks like we are dealing with a case of COPD here and all the masala is in favor of COPD he has already smoked 30 pack years okay now looking at further details he was not recently hospitalized and says his symptoms are same for past four months so it's kind of having a stable disease for past four months and he can walk 100 meters but feels he can't keep pace with his peers while walking which one of the following drug delivered as mdi would be ideal prescription for him okay so this patient is a case of copd and we have to manage him according to gold guidelines right according to gold guidelines so let us look into the gold guideline but before that let us look into the options options in front of us are ics formoterol combination triotropium ipratropium and albuterol ipratropium right okay so now let us look into how we manage a case of copd according to gold guidelines those who have followed the, the regular videos please note this is the update this is the 2021 gold guidelines we're talking about right so in the gold guidelines the management of our copd goes in these steps first you diagnose it based on the gold criteria which is nothing but your fev1 by fvc less than 0.5 bronchodilator reversibility suggestive of uh, not suggestive of asthma well you have copd now once you have copd you have to do a severity assessment so this severity assessment is dependent on patients fev1 post bronchodilator fev1 so based on that you classify into different severity okay this severity assessment doesn't have a bearing on how you manage a case of copd but still we need to do it because it's part of your gold guidelines once you classified the severity of copd after that you are taking a good history about his exacerbations because a patient of copd has two problems one is he is having recurrent episodes of exacerbations which is which is having an implication on his quality of life he may be hospitalized he may be requiring medications he may be losing work because of that so it has impact on his quality of life and we also as a doctor concerned about his exacerbation because every exacerbation might accelerate decline in his lung functions and it might add damages with every time there is an exacerbation that might accelerate his decline in lung function so we are definitely concerned about that okay now the other problem is because he is having copd because of this copd he may be dyspneic and his dyspnea is causing functional limitation all right so because i am copd i am unable to execute some of my activities so that is also a problem so we have to address both of these problems the functional limitation as well as exacerbation so we have two problems to address and to address these two problems we have to understand these two problems on the patient side so we are looking at the history for exacerbation to to understand the exacerbation consequences we are looking at the history so a good history is very much important and for understanding the functional limitation we are using tools just like how we have new york heart association grading for heart failure we have various tools for copd the two commonly used tools which are recommended by gold are your modified medical research council dyspnea scale for respiratory disorder and the other one is known as cat tool cat tool stands for copd assessment tool cat tool copd assessment tool you can use one of these to assess the functional capacity of the patient clear history for exacerbations and cat or mmrc for functional status okay 
Now, before we discuss how we further manage once we have this information, let us first look at the modified MRC dyspnea skit. This is important because most of the questions when they ask you to make a decision, right, they will be giving information that will help you to assess the grade of functional limitation based on MMRC. Right? So, according to MMRC, we will classify a case as grade 0 if there is no breathlessness significant, patient might get breathless only after sternness exercise like a normal person. Right, normal person does sternus exercise might feel breathless. So, grade 0. Grade 1 is where the patient feels breathless when he is hurrying on a level field or he is walking a slight uphill. So, it is like when you are there is a flat surface and you are walking in hurry, you might feel little breathless which can occur with uh, some, some of us also right? because our exercise tolerance is poor. Or when you are walking at regular pace with a slight uphill, slight inclination, you are walking at regular pace and you feel breathless, we call it as grade 1, right, grade 1. Now, MMRC grade 2 is what? Patient can walk on level field, but he cannot keep pace with his peers. He finds that he feels breathless and he is unable to match the pace or walking speed of his peers of like, you can say the same same age and gender matched individuals. Like typically your working peers or your school classmates, you are unable to walk along with them because you feel breathless. Right? That is grade 2. I walk slower than people of same age on the level because of breathlessness or I have to stop to breathe when walking on my own place on the level. Okay. That is grade 2. Now, what is grade 3? Patient has to stop to take a breath. He is unable to complete 100 meters. Right? He is unable to walk for 100 meters. This is very, very important because this is what most questions talk about. Patient is either able to walk 100 meters or if he is not able to walk 100 meters. He is not able to walk 100 meters, he is having grade 3 MMRC dyspnea. He is able to walk 100 meters, then he is having any grade lesser than grade 3. So, look into more details and then you will be able to assign 0, 1 or 2 in that case, right? So, again, again, this is very easy to remember because we are talking about patient unable to complete a 3 digit distance for a grade 3. Grade 3, patient is unable to complete a 3 digit distance that is 100 meters. Okay. Now, what is grade 4? At grade 4, patient is too breathless to leave the house, right? Or he is unable to carry out his routine activities of breathlessness, day to day activities at, of because of breathlessness. That is grade 4. Okay. Now, let us look at the question and see which grade of breathlessness this patient has. This patient has, he can walk 100 meters, so that means it is not grade 3. It has to be grade 0, 1 or 2, right? But he feels he can't keep pace with his peers while walking. So, this is typical, typical grade 2, right? So, please make a note of this. We are dealing with a patient having grade 2 MMRC, right? Having grade 2 MMRC functional status. And what about his exacerbation history? We are generally looking at one year history of exacerbation. This patient says that he has never been hospitalized and he is having stable symptoms for four months and before that he didn't have symptoms. So, in past one year, there are no significant exacerbations, right? So, exacerbations in this case are zero. Exacerbations in this case are zero. So, this patient has grade 2 MMRC and exacerbation is zero. Okay. Now, let us look at how with this information we further manage the case. I think I have already discussed that based on the FEV1, we also classify the patient's COPD, CVRT. So, it will be classified as mild or gold grade 1 if FEV1 is more than 80% predicted. It will be classified as moderate if it is, it is in the range of 50 to 80% predicted. That is gold 2 and gold 3 or severe when it is in the range of 30 to 50% predicted. And less than 30% predicted is when we call it as gold 4 or very severe. Anyway, this is not going to influence our decision making. What influence our decision making is exacerbation history and MMRC grade. And this information will be plotted on this table that we are showing now. So, what are we doing here? So, we are plotting his status, functional status in these columns, right? So, when we plot the functional status, patient's functional status can be like for example, COPD with MMRC grade 2, right? Grade 2 patient now among these boxes where else, where can he fit? Okay, so grade 2 MMRC patient can fit into either group B or he can fit into either group D, right? So, vertically we are plotting here. He can fit into group B or he can fit into group D, right? And a lower grade, 0 to 1 grade can only fit into a group A or group C. Now, whether he will go into group A or group C depends on 
is number of exacerbations in past one year right so if the grade is 0 to 1 he will fit into c or a and if it is 2 or more than 2 he will fit into b or d right so you can just remember this if it is 2 plus he will be fitting into b or d and if it is 0 to 1 he will be fitting into ac right so you can simply remember first class ac 0 to 1 he will be fitting into group a or c and 2 plus he will be fitting into b or d right okay now looking at the exacerbation if patient had 0 or 1 moderate exacerbations like when exacerbation leads to hospitalization it will always be treated as severe exacerbation so we are not talking about that moderate exacerbation a uh, exacerbation that needs that compels you to take care or seek help from a medical fraternity that is your moderate exacerbation an exacerbation which is like mild self limiting and you do not report to any hospital probably that can be called as mild so we are talking about moderate exacerbation 0 to 1 moderate exacerbation none of them leading to hospital admission in that case the patient will be plotted in either group a or b depending on his mmrc scale right so when exacerbation history is 0 to 1 patient can only fit into group a or b right so let us make this clear so here i am talking about mmrc and when we are talking about exacerbation if it is 0 to 1 exacerbation in last 12 months then patient will be fitting into group a or b right a b and if there are more than or equal to two exacerbations or even one exacerbation leading to hospitalization one exacerbation leading to hospitalization then patient will be fitting into group c or d right so this is how we can plot now now we have the information for this given case what is the information patient's exacerbations for the given case was zero and his mmrc was two mmrc was grade two right so let us plot it now zero exacerbation so if it is zero exacerbation patient can only fit into a or b and because the exacerbations were zero a or b and because his mmrc was two he can fit into b or d so uh, our plotting collides in group b right so our patient should be belonging to group b so this patient belongs to gold group b right so once you have grouped the patient you decide the further management okay now before understanding the further management let me tell you why this grouping is important and how the decision making is influenced by grouping okay so remember we have two important drugs at our disposal one is lama and the other one is laba okay when it comes to improving the functional status of the patient that means the dyspnea dyspnea is what is limiting his functional status right so when it comes to improving the dyspnea lama and laba are roughly equally similar or maybe laba is slightly superior some studies show that it is slightly superior in improving the functional status for all practical purpose they are similar lama is equivalent to laba or laba is equivalent to lama when it comes to improving the functional status or improving the mmrc grade of the patient like it is two if you give laba or if you give lama it might get downgraded to grade 1 or a 0. Clear? But when it comes to prevention of repeated exacerbations, Lama is by far the best drug. Lama reduces exacerbations much more significantly in comparison to your Lama. So if the real problem of the patient is exacerbation, he should be getting Lama. If the real problem is functional limitation, he can be treated with both Lama as well as Lama. Right? Now let us put this into action. Let us make problem statements for all these groups. So what is the problem of a group A patient? Group A patients exacerbations are limited. His functional status is good, right? So he is in the sweet spot. He is doing good. So in patient, in such patients, you can choose anything you want. Like you can choose any bronchodilator. Right? There is nothing binding on you because there is nothing dominantly affecting the patient. Like exacerbations are not the problem. Neither the functional status is a problem, right? Okay. Now what is the problem in group B patients? The problem in group B patients is functional limitation. Functional limitation is the main problem, right? The dyspnea is the main problem. So as I have told you, for dyspnea, your lama and laba are roughly equivalent. So you can use either lama or laba, right? Okay. Now moving to group C. What is the problem of a group C patient? His main problem is exacerbation. His functional status is good, right? So his uh, MMRC grade would be zero or one. His functional status is good. His main problem is repeated exacerbations and as i have told you for repeat exacerbations lama is superior right so we will be treating this patient with a lama so group c we will be treating the patient with lama okay now moving on the last group group d 
Group D is the condition where patient is affected by both. His functional capacity is limited and he is going through multiple episodes of exacerbation, right? So in such case, because Lama alone is good for both, like it carries the best of both worlds for exacerbation as well as functional limitation, you might decide to treat the patient with Lama alone or you can use a combination of Lama plus Laba if Lama alone is not sufficient. That is the usual recommendation. If you're dealing with a patient who might have some degree of asthma COPD overlap, right? In that case, you might consider inhaled corticosteroids. Inhaled corticosteroids are like recommended if the COPD is associated with like a group D COPD patient associated with hyper eosinophilia, defined as eosinophil count more than or equal to 300. Then you can add a inhaled corticosteroid, right? So is that clear? That is our approach. So we have a group B patient. So we have freedom to use either LABA or LAMA. So now let us go back to option and see what makes sense. Okay. Is option A correct option? No, right? ICS formoturol. Well, that's our drug for asthma. Here it is not sensible because we will not be using ICS plus LABA in most cases, right? Of COPD. If at all, you are using only when there is hyper eosinophilia. Here, eosinophil information is not only provided to us, right? So I cannot commit to option A at all. Option A is out. Option A is out. Okay. Now, the option D, albuterol plus ipratropium combination. Can we use that? No, right? Because your LAMA and LABA combination is indicated, right? Your, your first of all beta, beta agonist and a LAMA combination is indicated for group D patient. We don't have a group D patient here, right? We are having a group B patient. So that is also out, right? That's also out. Between tiotropium and ipratropium, you have to choose one here. Now, what is the options available with us for treatment of group B patients? We have LAMA and we have LABA. We can use any of these, right? LAMA or LABA, not LAMA plus LABA, right? So both of these are muscarinic agents. So let us see which one is a LAMA, right? We need a LAMA, not SAMA, right? So triotropium is the one which is a long acting beta agonist. Triotropium is the one which is a long acting beta agonist. So you can go with triotropium. Triotropium is the right answer. 